Right, well, we are in Fernvale at the premises of this master engineer here, who over several years has pulled this 480 horse, horse engine completely to pieces. And I'm sure the people interested in this will have had a really good look at all the photos when it was in pieces. Um, well, it's a five liter straight eight engine, the famous five liter straight eight Horsch engine. And um, well, as one can see in the photos, the um, you know, it has been completely been pulled apart and Peter has reconditioned um, all the interior of the engine of course it was um, machined boards new pistons um, uh, con rods uh, and uh, so forth new valves new valve seats and and and, and all that uh, drama um, quite apart from that the radiator we start at the front here the radiator has been completely been apart the top things have been taken off the, uh, the honeycomb radiator was completely cleaned um, the tanks were put back on and um, it was pressure tested and it turned out to be perfect um, this thing here which uh, works the shutters is at present not yet working um, we're still f trying to find a replacement for this but if we carry on the generator here has been uh, completely overhauled been completely apart um, so, uh, the water pump has been completely apart and while it still has the uh, traditional old look. The seal inside here is a is a is a modern um, seal, and should uh, last for ages. The um, oil filter here is the original outside again, but inside it has a modern, uh, you know, disposable cartridge that can be changed easily at any time. The um, distributor has all been overhauled and uh, everything, like, like Peter's done every single bush and every single uh, whatever. It's all been meticulously to pieces and uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a brilliant engineer. He's got the, he's got the stuff here, he's got the lathe and, and uh, he's built a lot of cars from scratch in his life. And um, he helped us uh, and got going a, a 1912 uh, Mercedes engine, and he had to make a lot of stuff for that, and a lot of bronze bushes and uh, so forth. He's a brilliant engineer. Now the gearbox has been completely to pieces uh, and reconditioned and so forth, and so has this uh, this um, well, what do you call it? Uh, it's a freewheeling device that gave us um, a bit of headache um, until we even knew how it was um, supposed to work and stuff. So, but anyway, we figured it out in the final. The uh, right, the starter mode has been completely reconditioned. So has the the the, the, the carburetor and so forth. Um, now he's done a brilliant job on this, and it, as I said, it took it took years. Obviously, not full time, but uh, to get all the bits and pieces, get all the bushes uh, made when they were necessary, and so forth. Um, We just uh, went through some more boxes and here is one of the pistons, a spare piston, because um, the company who 
specially made these pistons, um, we're requesting that at least 10 were made. So eight new pistons in the uh, in the engine, and um, and two um, two uh, spare ones. And also, while we're looking uh, a bit more around here, Peter's made a lot of um, uh, special tools. Like this is to tighten the uh, the nut on the back of that um, freewheeling device, isn't it? And um, and clutch things, and this was specially made to. Um, machine the uh, spring that's in the freewheeling device and other bits and pieces that were specially made to um, just fit this engine in particular. Right now I think we we'll go and have a look at the uh, where the rest of the car is. Okay, and here we go. Here is the rest of the car, and I have to explain this a little bit. Uh, a few months ago, we were going to ship the car, and because of that, um, Peter, the most, the world's most famous engineer, wrapped everything up um, and tied everything up to have it shipped. And it was not only. Uh, here's the, uh, so I think it's stainless steel, isn't it? Um, uh, thing that goes in front of the radiator. It's in, wrapped up in bubble, bubble wrap. Um, here is one of the headlights, and they're in, in beautiful nick, and they're as big as an elephant's head. Um, now, the, we, have, we have seen the engine, and this engine here, which is strapped down there on on some wooden things and uh, can't move is actually a Buick engine uh, that I acquired here a while back for a, another restoration project we have. Um, and w anyway, we'll, we'll probably have a walk around the car first. Um, I mean, the tyres are pretty new, but they uh, uh, well, they they they're pretty. They look pretty good, but. Uh, it's been sitting on these tyres for um, quite some years. So probably, uh, you know, for a proper restoration, you'd probably re, uh, need to replace them anyway, and that shouldn't break the bank. Apart from that, the car is very, very complete, um, and it appears that there is not much rust in it. Um, you see, I'll explain it a bit more. You see here the seats. Um, and they are um, guaranteed the right seats and there's um, more the other seat there and as you can see that the stuff in the front here there's the other lights and um, uh, in there and here's the uh, the chrome bar that's on the front with the, the one spotlight or, or whatever you want to call it um, the uh, the windows go up and down and all that. Uh, the uh, hood mechanism is absolutely original and complete and uh, a very, very sturdy um, a piece of mechanic there. Um, here are the, the, is the bonnet and the bonnet. I mean, there's no, there's no signs of rust anywhere, um, really, on the car. Um, I, I do remember the doors do sag a bit, uh, they're a bit sloppy, so they will need, uh, you know, uh, either the hinges or the hinge where the hinges are mounted, uh, that'll need some work. Um, I'm not sure if that is actually uh, original, I don't think it is, because Auto Union was only formed the year after this car was built, I think, or two years even. Uh, but I'm not sure on that. Um, anyway, here's uh, the other mud guard, and it's got a little bit of a kink here, but in the great scheme of things, that's basically nothing. Um, 
as I said, the windows go up and down. The uh, look at the dashboard, and uh, it's obviously not. This is not wood. Uh, this is just a. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to find out what they uh, probably had originally, but this is just a, a vinyl sort of stuff that's been put on there. But uh, you know, all these um, things here. All the catches and everything is uh, is actually there. Um, there's some other uh, stuff stored in here, like a steering box of a Buick and uh, um, other bits and pieces. And yeah, we really don't want to sort of take this all off. Um, here we go. There's the tail lights. Um, well, this is a reversing light, I would think. The tank. Um, so we do have a key, I think, for it. As I said, uh, I just wind that window down. And it works absolutely beautifully and absolutely silently. Um, steering wheel gauges from the other side there's one or two gauges missing there and they are on the other they are on the engine um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if they have all the right decals on them but um, they will be available only had um, only had one sun visor here because uh, there aren't, oh, it's even, oh, it goes in different directions. You can, you can do all sorts of things with it. Um, right, oh, what I was going to say here in the front, uh, Peter's had the, um, the front axle out and the rear uh, axle out, and he has, um, uh, the brakes have been completely redone and, and everything has been machined and uh, right down to the new grease nipples there. Um, and of course the same on, same on the other side. Uh, he's done the, uh, the, the same at the, um, at the rear and here um, the steering uh, what do you call that? The steering arm and the idler arm, and it's been rebushed and re whatever it needed. Um, also, the uh, the the springs have been rebushed and have been retensioned. So you see the uh, see the fresh writing on there. Um, there's the horn that looks pretty original. The um, the steering box uh, has not been out. Right um, now, if we now have a quick look, as I said, I mean it's 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 quite incredible. Um, but there, even under here, you know, there's no no rust that I can detect well, it's a bit dark also filming against the light doesn't make it any better um, Okay, now let's have a look at the, uh, there is the original plate on the firewall here, and it's, it's riveted in there, so it would appear to me that it's never been off, and what it says there, of course, is Horschwerke AG Zwickau in Sachsen. Wagen number, that means car number, is 
48025. Um, that, that, hang on, where am I? Um, God, I've lost track now. Oh, here we are. Um, it says tube, so that the type is 480. Uh, it says engine number. Um, <clears throat> engine number. Ah, uh, yeah, polishes up. Engine number 50117, also 50117, Wagennummer is 48025, Kubik or Cubic Centimeters 4911, so 5 liters or close to it, um, also 4911, Kubik Centimeter. Uh, <coughs> Typ 480. It says taxable horsepower, but it doesn't have anything written there. Uh, brake horsepower is 100, and the weight is 1985 kilograms. One, so nearly two ton. Right, okay, so, um, well, what can I say? It's, uh, it's a very, very complete car, and as I said, when I got it, uh, it was running, although it was only just barely running, and was a, quite a smoky engine, and, but the engine's uh, now running absolutely beautifully. Right, okay, well, we'll, um, we'll put everything back in the car, and um, oh, maybe I can have a look under the car in the back there, but it is getting pretty dark in here. Here's the tank, and as I said, the rear axle has been out and all the brakes have been done and I'll have to ask Peter um, but I think there is even photos there when the uh, differential was um, uh, overhauled um, here's the man himself a little bit tired uh, Peter did but did you do anything to the um, to the diff? Yeah. Sorry. The bearings. The bearings. What did he do to the diff? New bearings and seals. New bearings and seals. Yeah. Right. And, uh, plus wheel bearings. Wheel bearings and uh, yeah. Okay. Good. So this is the master craftsman here, just so uh, he's on here for eternity. <laughs> okay. Um, right, that is it. An absolutely unique car. The only survivor, according to the uh, Horse Museum in Zwickau, the only survivor of five 480 sport cabriolets that were built. Now the camera is telling me that we don't have much space on there, so uh, this is it for today. Now we're back at uh, Peter Rockcliffe's place and he's hooked up a petrol system in the good old Kiwi way and here's the 5 litre straight 8 
Porsche engine and it's idling beautifully. You can hear a bit of vibration from the radiator surround here. Now if we try and take that away, it's um, it fired into life El Pronto after about five or six seconds and now we've warmed it up for about five minutes and now it's idling just absolutely gorgeously all right when i um sh shut these things down it is idling absolutely beautifully maybe i should open them up yeah that gives it As one can see, there's no vibrations in in the thing anywhere. It is just beautiful. And um, Lovely. Do that again. You don't want to overdo it because obviously the engine still has to run in. I've got the uh, water temperature gauge here and oil pressure here. As I said, it's uh, well warmed up now. So, well, I guess this is proof enough that the engine is actually the, um, this is just sort of turning by friction. Right, and then the speed of drive there is Working fine. Absolutely lovely. So it is waiting to go back in its place. Bend it. Hey! It's the dog biting me. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, we shall leave it at that. And I don't know how to work the fader when to go out, so I'll do it that way. What? Yep, okay, we'll uh, just give a demonstration of how it starts too. Here we go. And starts to idle beautifully straight away. Lovely. So that's it now, for real. <laughs>